Coming up next, Frank and Mary in Framingham with your, your host, Grace O'Donnell, and me, Art Bergeron. Our guests today, Beth Gutierrez and Joanelli Estrella from the Adult Family Care Program at The Advocates. Stay tuned. Welcome to this episode of Frank and Mary in Framingham. I'm Grace O'Donnell, Director of Elder Services at the Callahan Center. I'm Art Bergeron. Uh, my day job is I'm an elder law attorney. I work at Myrick O'Connell, uh, the biggest firm outside of Boston. Um, we have offices in um, Westboro, among other places, but this is not about elder law. This is about my friends, Frank and Mary. You may have seen presentations that I do and talk about Frank and Mary and their children, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. Their goal in life, to stay in Framingham until they die and be buried in the backyard. That is the point of this show, is to help people figure out the people and the programs that they need to know about in order to stay right here. They don't want to go to Texas. They don't want to go anyplace else. They just want to be here. So the question is, who are those people? My co-host on this show is Grace O'Donnell from the Council on Aging because she knows all those people and all those programs. Grace, whom do we have today? Hi, Arthur. In honor of Caregiver Month, we have two guests, Beth Gutierrez, Director of Advocates Adult Family Care, and Joanelli Estrella, the supervisor in that program. They're going to discuss about how caregivers can receive financial assistance and additional supports for loved ones who are eligible for mass help. So, who wants to start? <laughs> well, I don't know, Beth, how about you tell us the history of the Adult Family Care Program? Sure. Um, so thank you so much for having us come on to your program today. We're really excited to share um, about the program here at Advocates, but also to share um, just a huge thank you to all the caregivers who are out there um, doing this work day in and day out. You're the backbone of our program, and we couldn't do it without you. So we're so excited to be here during Caregiver month, um, November, and we celebrate you um, this month, but every month as well. Um, so a little bit about advocates. We're based out of Framingham here. We're right down on Worcester Road. Um, and the program, or advocates itself, started in 1975 down at the Westboro State Hospital. So there was a group of families who really thought that care should really be talked about and come together as a group. So they started a coffee house to kind of figure out what's the best services that are needed? What kind of mental health services can, um, can people access or do they need? Um, and from there, the, that group of families um, recognized by the state were able to start um, different services for mental health um, individuals who maybe need help you know, from day-to-day -day activities or counseling or uh, the really unique way to kind of support and help each other. Um, and from there, since 1975, we've been in process and growing as an agency. Right now we support um, across the agency about 30,000 members um, or individuals in different service lines. So the agency itself um, works with mental health, behavioral health, um, developmental services, jail diversion, substance abuse, um, and our program, the Adult Family Care Program. So we've seen a large growth um, over, you know, four decades of services and care. And I think what really makes us unique is we look to who the members are, who are individuals coming for care, um, and what do they need? Not just what can we offer, what does the state offer, but what do they need as a whole person? And how can we work to really figure out what, what that is and how can we do it? Can we get creative? Can we work with different agencies or different funding sources to find that unique thing that works for you? Mm -hmm. um, so I would say we have so many services, um, you know, from children to adults and elderly that we span a really great, um, a great need and area of service for Framingham. 
And we love being part of Framingham and the Metro West area. And it's such an honor to be part of this community to see all the different things that are going on within the community. So that's a little bit about advocates, <laughs> but we're, we're happy to be here. And can you give it, us a bit more information about the adult foster family care program itself, um, how, how it came to be? Sure. Yep. Um, and thank you for that question. <laughs> so um, the adult family care program started at Advocates in about 2006. So that was when we um, started the program. We are um, Mass Health funded. So we had to be become Mass Health providers and connect um, with Mass Health Standard or Common Health. Um, so in 2006, we started out really small. Um, and all of the members that joined our program were supported by caregivers who lived outside of their home. They weren't family members. Um, but a lot of individuals wanted to live in a community setting. So this was one way that they were able to do that. Um, so in 2006, we started off with a handful of people um, and families and groups who came together and wanted to do that. In 2007, um, the regulations through the state changed, which then offered family members to become caregivers. So instead of an outside family member, it could be a mom or a dad or a grandmother or an adult sibling or an adult child um, who can now receive a tax-free stipend through the state to help provide care um, for someone living in their home. So uh, through 2007, um, we saw a large increase in our membership because there's such a need for families who are caring for loved ones in their home, um, but maybe they had to reduce hours of work or they lost their job because the care needs were just so great or they just really had a tough time making ends meet. This financial stipend allows you to be able to provide care in your home um, and also have nursing and case management support staff that will come out and visit it with you. So I would say right at the beginning of the program, it was actually to keep individuals out of nursing homes. So that was the general root of, um, of what the program is. So to not have someone go into this really restrictive environment, but to stay in the communities that they loved. And once they opened that up to family caregivers, we really saw families take you know, advantage of that wonderful program. And so ever since then, um, I would say we started from about 15 people and now we're at about 465, 470 members. Um, so a, we've grown quite a bit over the years um, and I will say I started at Advocates in about 2010 and ever since then it has been you know every year has been so different the state will change some regulations or they'll expand um, and during COVID right now we're doing a lot of telehealth we're doing a lot of things so the state is really um, working with us to provide these essential services um, to families in the area. Um, and I'll let Jonelli kind of share a little bit about what how the program operates um, and maybe what it looks like, if that's okay. Sure. Please do, Jonelli. Sure. Um, so I'm just going to start uh, with what the criteria would be if anyone is interested in AFC, um, especially now how Beth mentioned, um, the, the state is working with us, so we're still able to provide those needs, especially during these times where it's really hard. And and you're seeing a lot of people staying home as they're not able to do uh, go to their group homes and such. And so a lot of families are reaching out and to know that the service is available to them is really great. Um, and to be able to offset some of the financial hardships that we've been seeing as, during these COVID times. So one of the things um, in order to be able to be eligible for the services is that you do need to be eligible for Mass Health. And we do take two different types, which is Mass Health Standard and Mass Health Common Health. Um, so if you have either one of those two, we would be able to work with you. Um, you also have to be at least 16 years old to be able to qualify for our services. But with that, there's a caveat that your caregiver cannot be a guardian. So it gets a little bit tricky sometimes when you have a 16 year old and you just have the two parents in the home, then we kind of need to wait till they turn 18 years. Um, and then that part when the parents are pursuing guardianship, sometimes one of the parents won't be the guardian so that they can then be the caregiver. So those are kind of the things that we work and guide the families on, on how to prepare um, if we do find that they would qualify. So um, you Just to jump in really yes. quick. Mm -hmm. um, so part of the insurance as well, since this is an elder program, um, and we're speaking to the elder community too, 
work with a lot of the senior care options as well. So we have like Senior Whole Health or United or Tufts, those different insurance spaces, they have mass health funneling into them. And so it, we are able to work with them. We're contracted with all those different senior options as well. So I just wanted to highlight that, um, that part of the insurance is the main two of those um, mass health and common health, but we also have senior care options as well. Yes. I'll let you continue. Go. <laughs> I always look at it as mass health is the tree and then those are <laughs> the ones that it funnels into. So yes, thank you for pointing that out, Beth. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and so you do need a caregiver and the caregiver does need to live in the home. Um, so that's what's special about our program, especially where some will compare it to PCA where you don't need to have someone. But a lot of people are like, oh, I don't live there, but I go there every single day and, and I help them and I commend them so much for all the work that they're doing and the help they're providing because, you know, that doesn't go unnoticed. But unfortunately for our program, you do need to live um, with the person you are providing the care for. Um, and then... Um, so yeah, so you have to live in the same home. So those are kind of one of the things with the criteria. And then when you have that, then we have a phone screen that we do. And from there, we ask, you know, general questions like, what are your ADLs? And ADL stands for activities of daily living. Um, and those will cover uh, bathing, dressing, toileting, eating, um, transferring from one position to another. So those are the ones that mostly qualify for our program. We also take a look at behaviors um, depending on, you know, if you have resisting of care and, and things like that. But our main focus for our program specifically are the ADLs um, and the behaviors paint like a bigger picture. So depending on that and what your needs are, would will, will determine whether or not you qualify for our program. Um, you need either supervision and queuing or hands-on. And based on that, we do have two levels. Um, we have a level one and a level two. Those are um, what determines where you would fall in within that category. And then your stipend will follow suit depending on which level um, that you qualify for. Okay. And so Beth, in other I words, just want to make sure, I'm sorry, Arthur. No, no, you go I, ahead. I, I wanted to make sure I understood the person who needs the care, that's the person who needs to be eligible for either of the mass health, not the one who needs the care. Okay. Correct. The person who would be receiving the care needs to be eligible. Yes. Mm -hmm. And just kind of as a, as a related kind of trivia question. So for, for the, once they, once you've established in, in which category these people fall, mm -hmm. do they get just a, a stipend not dependent upon the number of particular hours that they're working with the person, but is it a, a, a fixed amount or, or cause I, I'm, I'm familiar with some programs where everything, everything, everybody's keeping track in like 10th hour increments and, and you know, the pay is, it's very, very specific, right? C correct. Yeah. So ours is actually a daily stipend. We don't do it by hours. So whenever we tell our members, you know, our caregivers and members and explain the program, we do explain that it's a daily stipend. So the amount per month, um, ours gets paid out monthly, uh, will depend based on how many days are in a month. So sometimes you've had caregivers saying, hey, my check's a little short. And I'm like, I'm sorry, it's February. There's only 28 <laughs> days, <laughs> you know? So it's, you know, give or take 30, 31 days and then the special month of February. So daily rate for us. Mm -hmm. That's great. Just because you're not spending half of the time you're doing this bookkeeping cool. and trying to keep track of all these like little tiny increments of hours. So that's a really wonderful piece of the program. Right. And one of the good things about our program um, is that you really only need one ADL to qualify. So it's not like you need to have all of these things going on with you. If, if something as simple as I need supervision and queuing through one task, like let's just say bathing, but you can still dress yourself and do other things for yourself. You're pretty self-sufficient with the exception of the bathing part. And you need that one supervision and queuing. That's enough to qualify you for our program. You would be a level one, but it's enough. So it's one of those things like a lot of people might think, Oh, I'm not going to qualify. I really don't need um, help. But when you, when you really ask the questions and get the, in there and you assess and you figure out what they are receiving for help, and what they can and cannot do for themselves, sometimes you would be surprised at who would qualify. So it, it never hurts to ask or check um, and, and, you know, and refer someone because you, you, would, you never know. That's the key. You never, I always try to tell clients about these programs, 
Never mm -hmm. say no to yourself. Right. Don't you try to figure out whether based on what you need, the program works. That's what these people with their smiling faces, and that's one of the reasons for this show, is that you can feel comfortable enough about to talk to these people, and they're going to help you figure this out. They're not there to try to take advantage of you. They're, they're there. They are your taxpayer dollars at work, really trying to help you. Right. One of the things that I pride ourselves on is that we might find that somebody doesn't qualify, but we won't just say, sorry, you don't qualify and just leave you. We also try to see what can we um, refer you to or say, hey, let's look into PCA. Like our program might not be the right fit for you, but PCA would because a lot of times um, you have what's instrumental activities of daily living, which is like the cooking and the um, laundry, housekeeping, those types of items or getting medications prescribed or going to the doctors and that paints a picture for us as a whole of what your needs are, but for AFC specifically, that those are not considered qualifiers. Um, and so, but there are some services out there that would help with that. And so that's where we're like, sorry, for this reason, you don't, but we like to refer people as well. So I think that's one of the good things about our program, about Advocates AFC specifically. And uh, Jonelli, I wanted to ask, is there anything else specifically about Advocates program that sets it apart from others? For instance, do you have a number of um, staff who have uh, other language skills? <laughs> yes. So, hablamos español. <laughs> Yo hablo español. Um, so, I speak Spanish. Um, and we do have... A We've got Haitian Creole, we've, we've got French, we've got um, Mandarin and Cantonese. Uh, we, we like to hire... Portuguese? Portuguese. Uh, Portuguese at this time, not right now. We've been defending ourselves a little bit with the Latin part of the Spanish and the Portuguese where we do understand. But unfortunately, right now, we do not have um, Portuguese-speaking staff. We would like to hire in that, though. So if we have enough members who need that support, we would definitely look to have that on staff. We did have about three or four staff who have all moved on or moved out of state. So unfortunately, we've lost those members. But we would love to come back. I'll let yes. you continue. <laughs> well, and we do, like Beth was mentioning, you know, if we, we like to hire – um, like based on the language needs. So if we start seeing an increased amount of members coming into our program that are needing that language need, we will hire accordingly to be able to support them. And not just for the language needs, but also the cultural, right? There's a lot of things that we might not necessarily be aware of. And so having somebody from that own cultural background allows us to provide that cultural sensitivity, that type of um, holistic care, if you will, because we're not just looking at it from like a medical standpoint, or you've got that social part of as well and cultural part of it. So I think we have a very good diverse team. Um, there are a lot of interpretive services that you can call into. I'm sure some have noticed that when they're at their doctors and they have the little um, like iPad and the interpreter on there, but we are one-on-one, -on -one, person to person, like we understand your culture, we can speak your language directly, and there's nothing that's going to be lost in interpretation um, when it comes to that. So I think that's very special uh, about our program. We have a nurse and case manager. Yes, those are the regulations, but <laughs> um, we provide that type of nursing oversight, um, education based on your medication, side effects, um, things like that, uh, monitoring to avoid complications because that's why we're there in the home, right? We don't want you to be in a nursing home. We don't want you to always be in the hospital. So we are there making sure that you are healthy. And if there's something that raises a flag, we will recommend you to reach out to your PCP or reach out to them ourselves um, and let them know what we're seeing. And then our case managers, they're there to help with, you know, helping find day programs and any type of community activities to help them be involved, you know, because for those who are willing, not everyone's always wanting to go out. So, <laughs> I will say, too, um, just to kind of highlight off of all those things, it's been a real privilege for me as a program director to see my staff, um, not my staff, sorry, um, the staff in the AFC program really take ownership of their cultural um, awareness and making sure that we're supporting members in the right way and sticking up for their culture and sensitivities and maybe how we're viewing it in a way that 
isn't culturally sensitive. You know, we, we run into some issues or how to handle really tough behavioral situations or how can I, and we brainstorm, we brainstorm of what does it look like medically? What does it look like, you know, culturally? I really, that's really part of the team that I absolutely love. Um, and I've learned and grown myself so much from that. And I'm just so proud of the, the staff that we have coming into your homes and talking and, you know, and just being able to be that support. We've caught things um, like early stages of pneumonia. Um, we've caught caregiver heart attacks, um, we, which is not one where necessarily really, <laughs> that was a scary moment, but, you know, we're happy to be part of that. Um, we've caught, you know, individuals who are experiencing some kind of odd symptoms and sending them to their doctors and finding out that they have a really pretty serious medical condition that could have caused permanent, you know, a stroke or permanent damage or anything like that. So we're really looking for that preventative side of, um, of work. And I would say it's, it always is fascinating to me that caregivers under report what they do day in and day out. They do so much, so much that I don't think they even realize that they're doing it. It's just second nature. It is just something that they do. Um, and it's such a privilege to learn from them and hear their heart and their passion and what, you know, as caregivers they want to do, but also what they want for the individuals living in their home and what those individuals want as well. And so it's just such a unique thing, like us coming to your home and hearing everything you do. And when we look at it and we're like, you must be exhausted. Like I'm exhausted just hearing you tell everything. And they're like, Oh, it's not a big deal. You know, that's daily. Um, but I really think that's where we, it's amazing to build those relationships and see how can we help you? How can we look at what you need? And in this moment, what's the biggest and most important thing for you? So I think Joe Nelly hit it right on the head of, you know, we're there to support. That's what we're there for. And any extra thing we could do, um, you know, we're going to try to do. Do you have any specific examples maybe of somebody who didn't think they would be eligible for the program and when they did end up signing on, how it helped them, what a difference it made? So I guess <laughs> I can share one of someone who's in Framingham. Um, we, I actually started working with them right at the beginning of when I started at Advocates and they had never heard of us, never like they got, I think they got randomly told about us um, through a senior center. And so we started working with them and the first week we were with them, they were running out of toilet paper. And so we got them toilet paper, you know, so it was like a very basic need of like, we need toilet paper. Um, and you're like, okay, like, let's find that for you. If like not, you know, so it starts off with basic need. Um, and as we progressed, you know, they were with us for about 10 years. Um, we've seen things, you know, like snap benefit, um, applications, shine applications, um, how to navigate the medical system when English is not your first language. Um, you need visiting nurses, you need basic, you know, your car needs a repair. Here's the stipend to be able to help with that. Um, funeral service um, arrangements, unfortunately, we did have to go through that. Um, you know, so, so many different things, but I will say through that family as well, like I got to know brothers and sisters and <laughs> daughters and all these other people who needed help. They're like, you're, you can help me. You know what you're doing. I'm like, oh, um, you know, so I think it's as basic as a roll of toilet paper and as large as let's get your insurance back on. Um, so that's one example. I don't know, if Joe, if you have another one. I think that that covers it pretty well. Yeah. It's <laughs> okay. a great example. And it really, it really speaks to, you know, you think you're applying to the program for just like the stipend check that you're going to get, you know, yeah. but what you're really ideally coming from what the way the two of you are describing and you're so enthusiastic about the folks you work for, right? The, that you are the programs, What you're really getting is this kind of participation in a kind of community of, of people who are genuinely interested and who know things that you would never know because you're only one person. And so how do you know what all those different programs would be? And so to really have that resource, that's a wonderful thing. Grace, and we these also, people really, these people really know are really good. These are, <laughs> these are, this is good. I hope so. I think it's important too, because even if 
English is your first language. There are, there's, there's things that it's still hard. It's very difficult sometimes to navigate, you know, through these different resources or understanding even some of the medical jargon, you know, if you would, when you're receiving information. So I think that we're able to help even translate or when you get a letter from Mass Health, it's like, hey, what does this mean? So I think that that's one of the things that's great about us that we can help them with those day to day things even. You know, we see a lot of caregivers who are doing so much care that maybe they're, they're not able to go out and do social things themselves or research the latest, coolest trends of how to prevent, you know, certain medical things or just have a cup of coffee. Um, so our team is really there to kind of help with caregiver isolation or caregiver burnout or just really feeling really isolated with no one to turn to for questions. Um, and that's partially what our team can do as well. So I just wanted to you know, I know we're getting short on time, but really just a huge plug for all those caregivers out there who are doing amazing um, and letting us be part of that journey. Well, Grace, how do these, how do, how do people find these people? These are wonderful people. We will have their website and phone number information available on the screen for people. That's we, great. We thank and you it, so much. And I bet if they call the Callahan Center too, they're just going to be able to get referred to all of these things. Absolutely. So, Grace, Grace O'Donnell's one-stop shopping can get you to these, can get you these people. So it's That's just wonderful. been, a, it's really been a treat, Beth, Beth and Joe and Ellie, to, you know, to have you. And, and Grace O'Donnell, yet, yet again, you find these wonderful people. My friends Frank and Mary have a owe you a tremendous debt. They're still in Framingham and they're thriving and it's because of you. So thank you very much, all of you. Uh, thank you folks for watching. We will look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Framingham. Thank you.